Hello, muchachos and muchachas. Happy Friday, everybody. You've almost survived another week of middle school, so good for you. Hope you're having a good day so far. Um, all right. You know the drill. Oh, well, I guess I should have left the welcome screen open, but you pro hopefully you saw it already. Um, so I'm just going to move right on to last night's homework. You know the drill. If you didn't do it, get out of here and work on it in the hallway. And if you did do it, we are going to do minus 10 points each. And if you messed up on the simplifying, we'll just I'll just have you take off five points. So like half credit if you messed up on the simplifying. All right, so minus 10 points each. Pause this video if you need more time to get all the cheaters out of here. And then we can start. All right, remember the three steps for dividing fractions are keep, change, and flip. So first we've got negative 3 eighths times 5 fourths. So that would be negative 15 over 32. I don't think you can simplify that. 15 is divisible by 5 and 3 and 15, but not 32. All right. Let, oh, also, if you forgot to make it negative, take off 5 points and do half credit for that. Don't forget about Dorito Man. All right. We got 3 fifths times. Remember, stick a 1 under the 6, and then the reciprocal would be 1 sixth. Although it's negative, so don't forget about that. Then we got 3 times 1 is 3. 5 times 6 is 30. And then make a negative. Both of these are divisible by 3. So negative 1 tenth. Third one. Keep the 4 ninths. Change the sign to multiply. The reciprocal of 1 fifth is 5, or 5 over 1. That would be 20 ninths, which is 2 and 2 ninths. Letter D, stick a 1 under the 4. I'm just going to drop the negatives because I know a negative divided by negative is positive. So who needs them? Keep, change, flip. Um, 4 times 7, 28. 6 times 1 is 6. I'm going to cut those in half just to make it easier. So that's 14 thirds. And then that would be 4 and 2 thirds. All right, next one. Keep, change, flip. So that would be 8 20 fifths. And that cannot be simplified. Next one. Um, keep, change, flip. So that would be negative 24 30 fifths. I'm trying to think. I don't think you can simplify it because 24 is divisible by 2 and 12 and 3 and 8 and 6 and 4. But I don't think 35 is, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going with that. All right, next one. Keep, change, flip. 3 times 3 is 9. 5 times 2 is 10. 9 tenths. Next one's a negative divided by negative, so I'll just pretend like they're all positive. So keep, change. Stick a one under it, flip, that's one third. So that would be eight twenty sevenths, and that cannot be simplified. Next one, keep, change, flip. That would be fourteen ninths, which is one and five ninths. All right, word problem. Amanda uses two-thirds of a cup of sugar for each batch of cookies that she makes. If she has four cups of sugar, how many batches of cookies can she make? So basically, you got to figure out 
how many two-thirds are in four. So whenever you're setting up a division problem, you want to start with the amount that they have. So she's got four cups of sugar. So I'm going to take the four cups of sugar and divide it by two-thirds. That way you can figure out how many two-thirds are in four. If you did two-thirds divided by four, you would get a different answer. So we'll work on that when I get back setting it up correctly. But if you did set it up correctly, it would be four over one, keep, change, flip, then that would be 12 over two, which is just six. So six batches. All right, then the last one. Circle the name of any student who wrote a division problem with a quotient between one and three. Let's see, keep, change, flip. That'll be three over two, which is one and a half. So that's between one and three. Um, Andrew, keep, change, flip. That'd be seven tenths. That's less than one, so that's not gonna work. This one, keep, change, flip. That'd be 18 eighths. Simplify it, nine fourths. I'm almost out of room, but that would be two and one fourth, I think. So that's between one and three. So Trayvon and Lily. All right, so minus 10 for each of those. Minus five if you messed up on the negative or simplifying, something like that. So go to your blue sheet and fill in the second to last row. And you can pause this for however long you need until you're ready for the warm up. All right, warm up. Oh, I think this is seven. Warm up number seven. Bethany is having a neighbor watch her dog while she's gone for the week. She decides to take seven-eighths of a pound of dog food and put it into seven containers equally. How much dog food will be in each container? All right. See if you can solve this. Pause it for a couple minutes, and then we'll go over it. All right. So let's see. Here's what she has. She has seven-eighths of... Ooh, I don't want white. Let's do red. She has seven-eighths of a pound of dog food, splitting it into seven containers. So that means you're going to do seven-eighths divided by seven. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to change, I'm going to flip. Boom, boom, boom. Multiply straight across. Seven. 56 and then what are both of these numbers divisible by? They can both be divided by 7. So then that would give you 1 8. This is kind of easy if you think about it though. Like if you have 7 eighths split into 7, 1 eighth. So that was easier than I even thought it would be. Uh, make sure you guys label your units too. Seven eighths of a pound. So you can just put LB. All right, you can put your blue sheet and your homework in your folder and then take out your notebook because we need to finish the notes from the past couple days where we left the bottom of it blank. So let me go to the multiplying fractions notes. Whenever you guys are ready, we're going to fill in the last two questions on that. All right, so I saved this for today because mixed numbers, whenever you're multiplying or dividing mixed numbers, it's a little bit more complicated. So we're going to look at how to do that. Some of this should be a review, which is good. So hopefully this looks kind of fami familiar to you guys. If you have a mixed number and you want to turn it into an improper fraction, 
Some teachers call it the Texas two-step. I kind of get got used to calling it that. Texas two-step is basically where you do these two things. You multiply these two numbers, so 7 times 1, and then you add the numerator. So 7 times 1 is 7, plus 4 is 11. And then you just keep your denominator the same. So we're going to need to do this every time we see a mixed number in a multiplication problem. You're going to need to turn it into an improper fraction. So let's practice on these ones first. Let's do 5 times 3, 15, plus 2 is 17, and then keep your denominator the same. So 17 fifths. So 3 and 2 fifths and 17 fifths are the exact same number, just in different forms. Let's try this one. 6 times 4, 24 plus 5, 29, keep the denominator, so 29 sixths. This one, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5 fourths. This one, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8, 8 thirds. So, let me show you when we're going to use this. So down here, we have a multiplication problem with a mixed number in it. So before we can actually start multiplying, we have to turn this into an improper fraction. So, let's take the 6 times 1, that's 6, plus 1, that would be 7 sixths, but it's negative. So negative 7 sixths times 1 fourth. So now we can multiply. 7 times 1 is 7. 6 times 4 is 24. And then Dorito Man says that's going to be a negative. So unfortunately, like some people think it's super easy. You would just do 6 times 4, 24. 1 times 1 is 1. And then keep the 1. But that is not going to get you the right answer. You've got to convert the mixed number into an improper fraction before you can multiply. So that's just an extra step we got to add to it. All right, this one we got two mixed numbers, so we need to turn both of these into improper fractions. So 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5 halves, then 5 times 3 is 15, plus 3 is 18 fifths, and then we can multiply. So 18 times 5, I feel like I did that the other day. I think it's 90. I'm going to trust myself on that one. 2 times 5 is 10. So then 90 divided by 10 is just 9. If I got the 90 part wrong, forgive me. And you can solve it correctly. But I think I'm right. All right, so make sure you got that, and then we got to go do the last two problems on the dividing side. This will be the same thing, though, except with dividing, you just got to keep change flip. So there's a mixed number in the problem. Let's turn it into an improper fraction. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 is 11 fourths but it's negative, so negative 11 fourths. And now I can keep change flip. So keep that, change the sign to multiply, flip this to 2 over 1. That's going to be negative 22 fourths. I'm going to cut those in half to make it easier. Negative 11 halves, which is negative 5 and a half. And you can always check it, too, like, real quick, just do 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Yep, it matches. All right, this one, we got 10 and a half divided by 3 fourths. So 2 times 10, 20, plus 1, 21 halves. And then just keep that, change the sign, flip this. The reciprocal is 4 thirds. 21 times 4 is 84, 2 times 3 is 6, 
I know these are even, so let me cut them in half. Uh, that's 42 and 3. feel like 42 is divisible by 3. Let me check. 42 divided by 3 is nice, 14. Ah, so that means 42 divided by 3 is just 14 holes. So we are done. So pause this if you need to. Make sure you got everything filled in on the multiplying and the dividing fractions notes. And then you guys can put your notebook away. You will just need a pencil for the rest of class. All right, so next thing we're going to look at is a recipe, because a lot of recipes have fractions in them. So this is an example of a chicken pot pie recipe. We got pastry dough, vegetables, butter, salt and pepper, and chicken. I feel like this is pretty basic. I don't know if it would actually come out good. But it says it serves two people. So in real life, like if people are making recipes, a lot of times they mess with the recipes a little bit to serve however many people they need. So a common thing would be to double the recipe so you could serve four people or half the recipe if you're just serving one person. And then I just made up a random one, make two thirds of the recipe um, just to practice. So if we're gonna double the recipe, we would multiply everything by two feel like it would probably just be easier to add it twice. So you could do like two and one fourth plus two and one fourth to double that. Two and a half plus two and a half, one fourth plus one fourth. You get the idea. If you're gonna half the recipe, obviously that means you're gonna divide it by two. But if you think about it, that also is the same thing as multiplying it by a half. So, for example, if I'm trying to do two and one fourth divided by two, if I'm trying to half that, I would do keep change flip, and then it would be two and a half times a half. So you're basically just gonna be multiplying each of these by a half. And then if you're making two thirds of the recipe, remember yesterday I told you of means multiply. So that means you would multiply everything by two-thirds. So I'm not going to go through all of this with you. I just kind of wanted to show you how that works because then you guys are going to take a different recipe and try this out. So I'll show you what recipe. Yours is actually looks better. Yours is mac and cheese. Everyone's favorite. So, we got a mac and cheese recipe. Everybody's going to get this sheet. Tells you the ingredients and how much. So you're going to fill in each of these boxes. So, six and a half cups of macaroni. Cups of mac, whatever. You can abbreviate it. Two and three-fourths cups of milk. And then you'll do the same thing for the cheese and the butter. I just realized there's a fifth row on here, so you don't need this bottom row. Just do the cheese, do the butter, and then you are gonna practice doubling all of these ingredients, and then halving all these ingredients, and then making two thirds of all these ingredients. So, remember this is times two, this is divided by two, or times a half, and this is times two thirds. So this is what you're gonna be working on for the rest of class. Um, there's not a lot of room to show work on here, so I expect you to either use the back of this page or grab scratch paper from the drawer. Um, let me find the directions, there we go. So you can leave this on the board so you know what to do when you're done. If you finish this, turn it in the tray, and then you can work on one of my puzzles or homework for another class or read a book. If you don't finish, I still want you to turn it in the tray at the end of class just so I can see how you're doing so far. So turn in what you got done by the end of class. 
and have a great weekend. I'll see you guys on Monday. Peace.